I would like to go into a comment that I read today and uh, just shine a little bit of light on this current thing that's going on among these different Hebrew Israelites when it comes to them being criticized or rebuked. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And this lesson will be entitled Rebuke Shaming, okay, or something to that effect. Anyway, this is from a post that a brother Rosh Shapa of the Twelve put up earlier today. And the title of the, the post was It's Gay Now to Defend the Truth. Amazing. So it's in reference to this statement that was made. I believe the brother was probably on uh, Twitter or what's known as X. And you got Hebrew Israelites that are on there or people that know that they're Israelites. I'll say it like that. So from this individual, Carl Waz, I believe that's how you would say it, or Carl Waz, he says, I think it's pretty gay that you brothers steady word about another man who teaches to keep the laws of God simply because of a disagreement in doctrine. Do y'all got anything else better to do? So a few things here in this that I'm noticing. Number one is that Jake has went. And let's, and let's look at this individual before we even I think I would imagine that this is the guy right here Now I don't know if he's a member of Sakari or whatever But I imagine dude yeah yeah, I can see the Sakari shirt So yeah so this guy And he's going to be the thumbnail Alright That little And then look at look at what Jake Perfectly lined up beard Lined up head Ball fade on the side Right Worldly And the guy next to him with a, with a fitted hat on so all the heat that uh, Alizar is catching right now, this guy, Carl Waz, I guess he took exception to it. So this whole thing with <clears throat> a couple of things that I want to mention is that now when Jake gets rebuked, all of a sudden now they want to say it's gay. Let's read it. Let's read it again. He says, I think it's, I think is he says, I thinks it's pretty gay that you brothers steady word about another man who teaches to keep the laws of God simply because of a disagreement in doctrine do y'all got anything else better to do now I'll say this you saying that the, the brother teaching to keep the laws well you ain't keeping the laws you that, see that's the whole problem with these different Israelites they count constantly talking about the law and you ain't keeping the law let's go there real quick I, I didn't even really notice that but now that we brought it up, let's go into it. Because see, Jake with this thing is attempting to rebuke shame. You want to shame us for rebuke by calling us, calling men gay. That they bring the heat to this dude for pre bringing a damnable heresy. First off, uh, Mar. Let's just go right there. This is going to be, oh, okay. Just bail me here. Corners. And Salakia, yeah, I didn't plan on even going into that. This is Leviticus 19:27. It says, "Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard." And when you look at this guy, is not his beard marred? Is not his head marred? Sure, it is. So you're talking about keeping the laws of the Most High. A man is teaching it, but then you ain't even teaching it. You ain't keeping it, and you're a hypocrite. Further than that, he says, so this is what these guys are doing. I don't have to read it again, but I wanted to make mention of this and notice that he says that it's all about. So basically, according to him, it's more about keeping the laws of the Heavenly Father and not about doctrine. It's not keeping the laws of the Heavenly Father a doctrine. He says simply because of a disagreement in doctrine. It's not a disagreement in doctrine. It's a profound going off in doctrine. And we've been instructed. <clears throat> by the heavenly father to rebuke individuals that go against the doctrine that teach different than us we'll read that before we even do anything else let's go to romans 16 because jacob's attempting to make it now is a thing or you you being gay if you rebuke somebody romans 16 verse 17 now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them so if a man teach something different than you his doctrine is perverse you're supposed to mark him and how do you mark individuals you mark them by 
bringing attention to him. See? So like yeah. That ain't what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the word Mark. In case Jake don't know it. This is the word right here. In the Greek. The word is skopeo. <clears throat> and how do you mark them? Let's see what it says here. It says to look at, observe, contemplate. To mark. To fix one's eyes upon. Direct one's attention to anyone. To look to take heed to thyself. And we're supposed to warn the rest of the flock. How are we going to do that if we can't mark them? You're attempted to shame us. Rebuke shame. By trying to say this. It's a gay action. Here's the word shame. Shame. <clears throat> and that's from dictionary.com uh, or from Google. It says shame. Make someone feel ashamed. Of a person, action, or situation makes someone feel ashamed. Uh, bring to shame. Cause someone to feel ashamed or inadequate by outdoing or surpassing them. No, not so much as in that one. What is the meaning of shaming someone? The act or activity of subjecting someone to shame, disgrace, humiliation, or disrepute. Especially by public exposure or criticism. Now, I know what you're thinking. You weak Israelites are going to say, well, ain't that what y'all doing? Y'all shaming. Well, this is the thing. The Heavenly Father told us to get on any person or anybody that's teaching about their doctrine. We're not just doing it simply because, you know, that we just want to do it. We ain't got nothing else better to do, which that's what Jake said. Y'all ain't got nothing else better to do. The answer is no. We don't have anything better to do than defend the gospel. No, we don't. He said, uh, it says here from Cambridge Dictionary. The act of publicly criticizing or drawing attention to someone, especially on the internet. So now this is two things. We are supposed to shame individuals by rebuking them. But that, that intent of that shame is that they will correct their doctrine. Not just because we, we you know, we don't have nothing else like um and I don't want it to seem like I'm being double minded because I said we don't have anything else better to do than defend the gospel. But in the context where this guy said we don't have anything else better to do. Than just talk about people. That, well, that ain't what we're doing. This is a spiritual word. So in regards to y'all got anything else better to do. Than defend the gospel. The answer is no. But do we have anything else better to do. Than just talk about somebody. Sure we do. But our main focus is, is uh, defending the gospel. So when you look in the word rebuke. Just do a word search. Leviticus 19.17 Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And not suffer sin upon him. So when you look at the word rebuke right here. Let's go into it and see what it says. I just want to do a nice quick lesson. I don't want to make it too long. We're supposed to rebuke our neighbors when we see them going off. The word is yaka. And it says to prove, decide, judge, rebuke, reprove. Uh, let's see here. To convince, convict, to correct, rebuke, to be chastened. And that's what's been happening to al -Azhar. We ain't just making videos about that guy because we hate him. We don't like him. You know. No, nah, we're making videos about the guy because he's going off. He's being corrected in the spirit. And you got a problem with it. And now you're guilty for trying to rebuke shame us. That shit ain't going to work anyway. And you can just see all these different words. Rebuke Rebuke is part of Hebrew Israelite culture, man. Proverbs 27 and 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. It's right there, man. Let's get another one or two here. As you go on through the word, through the uh, different books. <clears throat> right? Luke 17 and 3. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if you repent, forgive him. And we've been rebuking all this all about the hats, about some of the antics, about the different teachings. And the dude ain't repenting. So we got to continue to rebuke him. That's all. That's all. First Timothy 5 and 20. Then that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. There you go. And let's get this one. This is 2 Timothy 4 and 1. We'll just jump right to verse 2. It says, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Let's go to the, a couple of words here. It says preach the word right now the first word is reprove 
right? It's the Greek word alecho. And this is what it means. And you need to some people need to look into these words because they have a heavy connotation. Now it says here to convict, refute, confute, generally with a suggestion of shame of the person convicted. So like I said, this dude is trying to rebuke shame us when rebuke does mean the shame, but we gotta have a righteous cause in order to do that. We're trying to shame this guy, right? We're trying to rebuke him to the point where he gets embarrassed about his going off against the scriptures and maybe he'll correct himself. We ain't just doing it because we, you know, just to be doing it. But this dude, now, now you guilty. You put your mouth in it and now you guilty. So it says, generally with a suggestion of shame of the person convicted by conviction to bring to light to expose. Uh, Alazar's being exposed. Now you being exposed, Carl Waz, to find fault with, correct. So this dude saying we, ain't, we, we uh, you know, it's gay to get on a person or to continuously talk about an individual just because of a simple disagreement in doctrine. You downplaying the significance of teaching damnable heresies and you attempting to law shame us. Don't do that, cause to find fault with correct by word to reprehend severely chide admonish reprove to call to account show one his fault demand an explanation and we've done all this by word we haven't you know tried to punish the dude by deed you see it says to confute admonish convict convince tell a fault rebuke rebuke reprove we've done all of these things and it's well within our right to do so Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. But why? For the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So that's why we rebuke different individuals, and particularly this guy's taken up for his for his homeboy, Alazar. Okay, now a couple more. Titus 1.13, this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. But why? That they may be sound in the faith. That's the whole reason why the dude is getting rebuked. Right? These, uh, Titus 2.15, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. And these dudes are trying to rebuke shameless. But that shit ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. So, also, Isaiah 58, verse 1. It says, Cry aloud, spare not. Spare not. Right? Don't spare dude's feelings. Don't not get on them because somebody may say, Y'all being too harsh. You ain't got nothing else better to do. You call us gay. I think it's pretty gay that you, brother, steady word about another man who teaches to keep the laws of the Most High. Simply because of a disagreement in doctrine. It's not simple. And it's not just because of a disagreement. It's because the dude is downright going off. And this, and the Lord told us, cry aloud, spare not. Don't spare anybody's feelings. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Just like we did with you, Carl Wise. We showing you your sin. Ball fade, head lined up, beard lined up, mustache lined up, tattoos. We probably had the tattoos before you came into the truth. So lock you on that. Where a guy out there on the street prophesying with his damn head covered. And your leader, he said that the writings of Paul was not authoritative. Right? So that's going off, man. So we had to he had to be told that he was going off. Alright? And simply I'm gonna read this and then we can close the video. This is Acts 5 and 29. Now it's dealing with another situation, but it's still the same. It still holds weight. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. We have to obey what the Lord told us to do. He told us to mark them which caused divisions, right? He told us to lift up our voice like a trumpet and show our people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So you sinning. Alazar is sinning, the rest of Sakari is sinning, going off, and we well within our right to rebuke you and put you in your in your proper place. 
And I think it's, you know, like he said, he think it's pretty gay. Well, I think you, I think it's gay to say that we being gay for rebuking you in an attempt to, to rebuke shame us. I think that shit is gay. How you like that? And so for you brothers and sisters out of the see this, these Israelites are going to continue. They just want to be left alone in their wickedness. But you know what? We ain't going to make videos about y'all forever. You're just the flavor of the week. We, the Lord told us to rebuke. We're rebuking while the spirit is on us. But in a while, we're just going to go back to what we've been doing. And we're going to leave you to your folly. So do what you want to do, man. Ain't nobody worried about you like that. All right. So this is this has been rebuke shaming. And, and I'll probably have another title by the time you see this. Anyway, all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.